Good morning, everybody. This is Edvato. I'll vote you from TorahAnytime.com and from Magen David Bet Knesset in Los Angeles. This week, in the parasha is Bamidbar. We're reading a new book. And the Midrash says, actually, on the first Pasuk, it's very interesting why always the parasha of Bamidbar comes the week before Chag Shavuot. And the Midrash explains and says that the message is to tell us that a person can only acquire the Torah if he puts himself hefker kamidbar, free like kamidbar. In other words, ready to accept what God is asking us to do. If a person is ready to accept with a free will the Torah, that's the way a person can really acquire the Torah and appreciate what the Torah does to us. So we are in the middle of the Sefirat Omer. We have another 10 days left. Today is the 40th day of the Omer. We're getting ready close to Shavuot. The Midrash says that before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty came and gave us the Torah on Mount Sinai, on Har Sinai. He went around all the world to all the other nations of the world and offered them the Torah. So they shouldn't say and have a claim, you know, it's not right. You gave the, why did you the chosen people? If you would have given us the Torah, you would have also accepted it. So God didn't want this claimant to be claimed, so he went to all the nations and he offered them the Torah and they had one question, they all asked God, ma katuv ba, what is written inside the Torah? Let's see what the deal is what are you giving us? Our hachamim, our rabbis explain <coughs> that when the nations of the world asked what's written in the Torah, it wasn't just to inquire, it was a nice question, okay what's inside we're inquiring what's inside so we can see what's inside. No, it was much deeper than that. When they said what's written inside the Torah, their problem was they want to know are they going to be restricted in life? Can they continue their life the way that they lived freely without any type of restrictions whatsoever? And if not, they're not interested in accepting the Torah. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu told them exactly what's written in the Torah. They should not murder, they should not kill, commit adultery. It was too much for them. They couldn't take it anymore. No, we're not interested in having a type of a law and a force over us telling us how to live our lives, what to do and what not to do. But when they came, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu came to the Jewish people, Am Yisrael, the Jewish people didn't ask any questions, said, Na'ase We're going to do whatever is there and we're going to listen. But they didn't even say first, let's hear what's written and then we're going to do it. They said the magical words that the angels use. Na'aseh v'nishma. First we're even going to do it. Then afterwards, give us the Torah. Let's see what's inside. But we're going to accept it with all our will, with all our heart. Truth be said, over 2,000, 3,000 years after the Torah has been given, we're living in a time and age when people, Jewish people, unfortunately today, in our lifetime, ask the same question like the Ummot Olam asked, like the nations of the world asked. They ask and they say, Ma katuvba? What's written in the Torah? They want to know what's written inside, not because they're interested to come and learn to be a scholar, but they say, prove me this is true. They have all these types of questions that you hear from the people. Why are you not allowed to do this today? What's wrong with that? Why is the Torah restricting me? It's such a shame that they don't realize the beauty of the Torah. The Torah doesn't restrict us at all. The Torah shows us a path of life that makes us happy. You know, you meet people today and you ask them, why are you not keeping Torah mitzvot? Why not? What's wrong? And they look at you and they say, Rabbi, what do you mean? Don't look at me like that. Don't judge me the way I look. Don't look at me because I don't wear a kippah. I don't wear tzitzit. What are you talking about? I keep Torah mitzvot. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a good Jew. So you ask them, really? Um, he, they tell you, look, I don't light, I don't put the fire on on Shabbat. I don't light ash on Shabbat. I'm a good Jew. So when you ask them, what about driving on Shabbat? Come on. Now don't be a fanatic, Rabbi. Driving is not putting on the fire. What's wrong with driving? There's nothing wrong. And then you ask them, well, what about the children? The children, ah, you know, today in the age and time we're, late, we're in, you're not allowed to pressure the children. You can't pressure them. Leave them alone. Let them have a healthy and happy life. You know, don't look at me the way I am. My grandfather was a rabbi. I'm a good person. I'm a Jew in heart. I'm a good Jew. 
And these are the Jewish people, unfortunately, our brothers and sisters, that they don't understand because they're not learned. It's not their fault. We can't blame them. They don't appreciate what Torah is about. They think that Torah is restricting us. But really, Torah is a blessing in our lives. Without Torah, where will we be? We'll be a different type of nation. We won't be the Jewish people that we are today. Torah is so sweet. Like David HaMelech says, Ta'amu ura'u ki Torah Hashem. All you have to do is taste it. Learn it. Taste it. And you'll see how beautiful it is. You can't live without living a Torah life. There is... It's like, for example, a person goes to the doctor. You have three types of people. The Dubin Amagid says. You go to the doctor and he gives you medicine to recuperate, to become better. <clears throat> it's a remedy for you. So you have one guy who doesn't understand anything about medicines. He takes the medicine and he, Baruch Hashem, thank God he becomes better, he gets healed. The other guy thinks he's smart. He knows, he's learned medicine before and he starts investigating each medicine, what it's about. So the ones he understands, he takes. The medicine doesn't understand, he doesn't take. And unfortunately the guy dies. The third guy also learned medicine. But he also tries to investigate the medicines. And if he understands them, good. If he doesn't understand them, he doesn't question the doctor. He still takes it. He's humble enough to say, I trust in the doctor. And he takes the medicine. These are the three types of Jewish people living today in the world. You have one guy. The Chacham says to do something. The Torah says to do something. He doesn't ask any questions. He goes and he does it. And he gets Chaya Olam Abba. He lives a life, eternal life. And a beautiful life. You have the second guy who thinks he's smart, that everything the Torah says he questions. Why is this true? Why is this not? Who said, unfortunately, this guy misses out, Chaye Olam Abba. He loses the eternity of life because of all his questions. And the third guy who learns, he's a scholar, he also investigates what the Torah says. But if he doesn't understand, he doesn't understand. Akadosh Baruch Hu is greater than me. God knows better than me. God created this world. God created me, He's my creator, and if He tells me this is the book, this is the rules of life, and this is going to make my life a beautiful life, then I'm going to believe in God, I'm going to trust in God. The best example I can give you, my friends, is the keeping of the Shabbat. How beautiful it is to keep Shabbat. We're rushing every day of the week with all the technology that we're living in today in the world. You know, my cell phone, I can't move without my Blackberry. Every second I'm texting. Today, we don't even talk to people anymore on the phone. We don't even see them anymore. All we do is we text. Hey, what's up? Can you come to the class? Can you come to my house for Shabbat? What time am I meeting you? Everything is by texting today. There's new polls are. Most people text. More people text than they speak on the phone. It's a, it's a world of technology. We're busy. Today, we get the emails right on our cell phones. I said this before. Third graders today, they have cell phones in class. Why? I don't understand. I still today, being an educator, don't know what they have a cell phone for. But they're texting away. It, we're living in a world of texting. Today the new iPad is out. I have friends who are waiting on the list. Because they're sold out to get the new one, the 3G. And, you know, it's a different world today. We're so busy. Shabbat today, even more than any other time, is such a blessing. To get together with the family. To, we're so busy with everything in the world during the week. The Shabbat is we put that all aside. Thank God. Put the cell phones aside. Put the computer aside. Put the car aside. And we're at home for 24 hours together with the family time. Sitting on that table. The mother lighting the Shabbat candles. Coming home on Friday night. Being together with the family. Listening to the children. Have what to say. Say, hearing the Devrei Torah from the school, that's so beautiful. There is no picture in the world, there's no money in the world that can explain you how beautiful a Shabbat is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm begging you. Listen to David HaMelech. Ta'amu ura'u. Just taste it. See what you're missing. And then you realize, Kitov Hashem, that the Torah path is the right way to take. Have a great week.